peace. This your host, Selah Shalom. And this is the Cosmon teachings and the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible, Owaspi. And the topic of discussion today is going to be called the genealogy of the human race, where I'm going to be going into the origin of the first humans, being 72,000 years BK. BK meaning before Cosmon. And the birth of Cosmon was the year 1848 AD, present time. That's when the Earth passed through the arc of Cosmon, which is the beginning of a new arc cycle of a 3,000-year period. So 72,000 years going back is when these races began to multiply upon the face of the Earth. And I'll explain this as I go along through the documentary. And in the last documentary called Adam and Angels, I explained the creation of Adam, or the Homo erectus, being native-born created from the Earth. Then you had the angels that came from the heavens down to the Earth, not being native to the earth amongst the Adamites or Homo erectus. And the two races interbred, the Adamites and angels, producing a new race called man or Homo sapien. And it is here where I'm gonna be where I'm gonna pick up at the new race born as a result of the two genealogies, the Adamites and Angels. Now in the first book of the first Lord, chapter one, verse three through 24, I'm going to skip through, it states, and I'm going to explain these verses as I go along, verse 3, and it came to pass that a new race was born on the earth, and these were called Ions, because they were begotten of both heaven and earth, hence it became a saying, the earth conceived of the Lord, now, this new race was a crossbreed between the Adamites of the earth and the angels that came from the heavens, and the new race were called Ions, or Homo sapien. And this took place when the earth crossed the Ark of Wayne, 72,000 years before crossing the Ark of Cosmon, which is the Ark we're in now. And in verse 4 it states, And the name of the first race was Asu, or Adam, because they were of the earth only. And the name of the second race was Ion, or Abel, because they were capable of being taught spiritual things. So here it distinguished the two races, the first being the Adamites, being of the earth only, and the second race being the Ions, or Abel, or Abelites, a crossbreed result by the angels. And the Ions were able to perceive spiritual or heavenly things, while the Adamites, being of the earth only, could not comprehend spiritual or heavenly things. And verse 6 states, And the Lord spoke unto the Ions through his angels, spoke he to them, saying, Go hide thy nakedness, for it is the commandment of God. Verse 7. And the irons were afraid, and they clothed themselves, and were no longer naked before the Lord. So here the Lord speaks to the angels who are guardians over the new race, the irons, to command the irons to cover their nakedness. And from that point, the new race were no longer naked, while the Adamites still roamed naked. And in verse 8, it states, And the Lord commanded the angels to give up their forms and to be seen no more as mortals. And it was done. And the Lord said unto them, Because ye brought forth life, which is in flesh and blood, ye shall minister unto man for six generations on the face of the earth. And it was so. So here the Lord commands the angels who are guardians over the irons to give up their physical bodies and be seen no more. And the angels are bound to this new race, the irons, or Abelites, because of the crossbreeding with the Adamites, as it states, because ye brought forth life which is in flesh and blood. So these angels are guardians over their own offsprings, being ministering angels over them for six generations, which is 200 years. And in verse 9, it states, and that, and that man may continue to walk upright, ye shall teach him the law of incest. For man of himself cannot attain to know this. Verse 10, Neither shall ye permit the irons to dwell with the Asu, or Adamites, lest his seed go down in darkness. So here the Lord, so here the Lord further commands the angels who are guardians over their own offspring, the iron race, to teach the irons the new law, to teach them the law of in incest, 
and to teach the Ions not to dwell with the Adamites, lest they be tempted to partake of the tree of life, meaning into breeding. Verse 11. And man was thus inspired of the Lord, and he walked upright and prospered on the earth. Verse 12. But after a season, man became conceited in his own judgment, and he disobeyed the commandments of God. So here it states that the irons prospered, and after a long season, the irons began to disobey the commandment of God. And the commandment of God for them were not to dwell with the Adamites and the law of incest. And in verse 13, it states, And he strayed out of the garden of paradise and began to dwell with the Adamites. And there were born into the world a new race called drunk or Cain. And they had not the light of the Father in them. Neither could they be inspired with shame nor of heavenly things. So here it states that the iron strayed out of their dwelling ground called the Garden of Paradise or Eden and began to dwell with the Adamites and were tempted and partook of the tree of life. And a new race was born called Drunk or Cain. And they had not the light of the Father in them like the Ions or Abelites. And now you have a crossbreed between the Ions and the Adamites producing a new race with a little more knowledge and capabilities than the Adamites but less than the Ions. And in verse 14 it states, And the Ions were grateful to the Lord, and they gave sacrifice and burnt offerings. And they said unto the drunks, or Canaanites, Go ye and sacrifice unto the Lord, and he will prosper you. But the Canaanites understood not, and they fell upon the Lord's chosen, and slew them right and left, taking their possessions. So here, the Ions, or Abelites, tried to explain the sacrifice and burnt offerings to the Canaanites, how to give praise to the Lord. And the sacrifice are not animal sacrifice, but thanksgiving and praise. And burnt offerings is the burning of incense, not to be confused with the pagan practice, which I'll explain in later documentaries. But the Canaanites could not understand the practice the Ions did, being that they did not have the light of the Father in them. So they fell upon, they fell upon the Abelites, or Ions, slewing them right and left, taking their possessions. And this was the first act of tribal warfare where the Canaanites were killing the Abelites in mass genocide. And with Cain killing Abel, the Lord put a mark upon Cain, as it states in the first book of the first Lord, chapter 1, verse 15 through 24. It says, verse 15, And the Lord said unto the drunks, or the Canaanites, Because ye have slain your brother, ye shall depart out of the place of God. And that ye may be known to the ends of the earth, I'll put my mark upon you. So here God commands the Canaanites to depart away from the Ions and their dwelling place. And God put a mark upon Cain. And in verse 16, it gives us this mark as it states. Verse 16. And the mark of the Lord, and the mark of the Lord put upon the Canaanites was the shadow of blood which being interpreted is war. So here the mark of Cain is war, or warfare, the shedding of blood. And in verse 17 it states, And the Lord God said, By this sign shall the tribe of Canaanites and their descendants be known unto the end of the, of the world. So here it states that war is the trademark sign of the tribe of Cain and their descendants. And that shows... I mean, and that's how they will be known unto the end of the earth. So the mark of Cain or the mark of the beast is warfare and bloodshed. 